Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Engine. Today we're looking at light groups in Blender. Light groups is now something that is coming into Blender and it makes a lot of sense. First off, you need to go over to blender.org, hit on the download button, go all the way down here, get to the experimental branch and get the latest and the greatest version of Blender 3.2, the alpha, which is definitely going to be in beta pretty soon. So basically the whole idea of light groups is for you to be able to group your lights so that you could render these things independently, regardless of other lights that exist, or you can simply have a bunch of lights and you can have those light groups and also use the light groups to control how light gets to work within your scene. At the end of the day, the whole idea of light groups is for you to be able to control the lights how you would love to have them in your final rendering. Although the way Blender actually makes this work between the viewport and also the compositor is just quite interesting. So with that said, once you have Blender 3.2 open, what you can do to get things started is simple. I'm just going to get rid of the cube and throw in our very good friend, Suzanne. And once we have that, let's go in and subdivide this bad boy. And the next thing which we need to do is to go in and create a couple of lights. Once we have these lights here, we would need to switch these to cycles. All right. If it would not cut it for you, cycles will. So we're just going to switch this to cycles because if we don't switch this to cycles, let's switch that to GPU as well. If you don't switch this to cycles, if you go over to your render layers, you will not be able to see the light groups. We have four lights here and you can create as many groups as you want. So if you like all of these lights to exist in one group or two groups, perfect. If you want them to exist in several groups, that's also perfect. So what I'm going to do is just call this um, light one. So you could name this however you want. So probably light one is just going to be this one in front, you know, the one facing this. And I can call these other ones side lights. And then the side lights are definitely going to be these ones here. And then we can call the last one the backlight. Now, once we have all these lights, we would also go in and start making some changes. One of the cool changes that you can do is the color. So we'll just go in here and start changing the color. Let's switch this over to cycles so that we could see what we're doing. I'm just going to set that all the way there. Let's scale this bad boy a bit more. That's a little bit too much. Okay. So let's raise that a little bit upwards. Perfect. So once we have this here, I can go in and set this all the way to blue, you know, like some blue stuff. And we can set this other one down to red which is pretty dope by the way. So I'm just going to set this to red and I would turn that green. Green looks good coming from the back. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, all that color, I think another thing which I would love to do is, um, let's make this an area light, which is nice and fire this through to this point and probably raise this just about a tiny bit like so, so we can have that rim. And I think this might also be good to be an area light so we can, also fire this towards this point and that looks good. Now, finally, we have these other one, which we might probably not do anything too much, except for the fact that I would like it to be right here. So all of what we're doing are just cosmetics to get the lights working. And this is where the light groups actually starts kicking in. So once you have all of your lights done, selected, you know, fixed properly, you can now go over to the properties section and start applying or putting these lights in their groups. You remember we set this first one and this other one as side lights. So what we could do is we can go over to the properties section, go over to shading and within the light group that exists under the shading, we can click and with the object selected or with the light selected, you can put these inside their individual groups. So I'm just going to put this side group. So I'm just going to put these two within the side lights, select this one that is behind and set that to the backlight and set this as light one. So this is perfect. Next thing, select the camera that you want. Go over to view camera, active camera, tap in on the keyboard, go to view, lock this so that you can move all of this bad boy, you know, looking good. I think we might also be needing a plane. Lovely. So now that you have all of this ready, the next best thing to do is to render it. The way that this works currently is sort of within the viewport and the compositor, but majorly within the compositor. So once you have this ready, you can go over to render, hit the render button to start rendering this bad boy. And once we're satisfied with the result, I would just simply close that and we can jump right into the compositor. So once you go over to the compositor, we're just going to click on use nodes. And you can see that we have our render layers here. And if you zoom right in, you would notice that we have the combined light one, 
combined side lights and the combined back light. This simply means that at this point, we can now view our lights independently. And this is great. I mean, with this right now, you can start doing so many stuff. With this, I can switch from the first light and I can jump in to preview what the second light looks like. And we can see what the third light looks like. And you see all of these lights are here for you to tweak and get some very good results with them. So some of the nice things that you can do is if you like to just have your original light like that, of course you can, but you can now start mixing and matching these things to get some pretty good result. And you can do this by using a mix node, which would just help you mix this light however you want. So I could go in here and say, you know, I might want this to be the first and then this could be the second. And once we have these two, we can link them up together. And probably if we start cranking this back and forth, you would see what the results look like. So with the fraction, we can control which light influences which. So if I push this all the way up, you would notice that we're having the backlight taking precedence of all the other paths. And if we push this all the way back, you would notice that we're having the side light having precedence or, you know, taking control of the entire lighting right now. So we can now mix this light within the compositor and we can also click and drag and throw in another mix right here. And within this mix, we can also get some very cool stuff. So I'm just gonna drag these two in and drag this right there and we can also take this out. So we can mix this and let's just go in to a position like so. And we can also mix this depending on the kind of blend that we want. Some other things that you can do with this is you can throw in a hue and saturation and you can start generating some very brilliant looking designs. So imagine trying to change the color of a light after a render and you know, that would cause you to re-render these things over and over. But with a feature like this, you can group these lights independently and you can render them and also have control of how these lights look like. And this just simply makes the light group something that is worth having in Blender. But the way Blender actually approaches this is a little bit different from other traditional 3D apps that we've seen. So we're just going to jump over and take a cue from Maya, just in case, you know, you're coming from Blender to Maya or Maya to Blender, and you're wondering, hmm, how does this actually relate? So how you can work with things like this is pretty simple. So if we're looking at Maya, for example, we have a simple cube right here, and we've also set this up to just be our default renderer. So it just simply renders right here. So to get your light groups working in Maya is a little bit interesting to a given point. So how that one works is this simple. You go over to your rendering, you select the kind of light that you want. In this case, I'm selecting an area light. So because we have this light here, I'm just going to set this to 10 and then I can select these other one and set it to, okay, let's do a 10, 10. And I'll also select that, change the color, select these other one and change the color right here. So once we have this colors changed, I could also go in and throw another light and let's make this 20. All right. So the reason why we're making it 20 is just so that this light becomes pretty obvious. So I'm just going to raise this up as well. And we're having a green light and we're having red lights. Okay. So we could also select this and make that a blue light in this case. So now we have all of these lights right here. So how you get to group stuff in Maya is a bit different. If you have your lights going on, what you could do is you can click on this tiny light button here and it opens up all of these lights and you can see them. And from here is where you can control all the lights and how the lights actually behave, all the properties of lights. You can turn the lights off from here. You can turn them on. You can do everything. But the group one now makes sense because once you click on the group button, you can select and group right in there and also group this one right over here. And at this point, you can simply solo the grouping or you can turn them off. And this is just one of those things that would make sense to see in Blender. I think the only renderer that I have seen and tested a lot that sort of supports something like this is Renderman. I don't know if Octane has it, but Renderman seems to be one that has this feature and it makes a lot of sense to see. So in Maya, this is basically how you get to do it. And on the other hand, if you like to, you know, do some other stuff or set this as a different group, you can also do the same thing. And one thing which I would also love to see come to Blender pretty soon is the object and light linking. So how this works is also pretty nice. So the fact that if you go over to your light settings and then you choose to link your object, either make them light centric or object centric, depending on what you want, 
you can. So at this point, if you're looking at the area light and I'm selecting this, if for example, I don't want this light to affect this cube, the blue light, which is the prominent light, if I don't want it to affect this cube, but just the floor, we can. So I can just simply turn off everything and uh, just simply select the floor without the cube and you can have this. This way you have full control of how the lights would work. And that is something I would love to see come over to Blender. At this point, you get to work with the light groups in Blender, but it is not as flexible as you might want them to be in the sense that you cannot necessarily just turn off and turn on the groups. You would need to go over to the renderer and do all of these things manually. But regardless of that, working with light groups in Blender is pretty nice to see. And it will make a whole lot of sense if we can get some more updates come over to Blender in this regard. So this is more like it. For those who like to try this out, for those who like to test it, links to this is gonna be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.